Yeah. Hey guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me at all? And do I have any sound? Do I have any sound? Do I have any sound there, guys? Sorry about uh, any issues, but the uh, chat box is not working on OBS yet once again. So, all right. Hey guys, hey, thank you for joining in. I am exactly one minute, I do believe, behind schedule, of course, with typical OBS issues. Uh, so, thanks, thanks guys, thanks guys. Hey, there's Mr. Zimmerman. Hey, Mr. Zimmerman, guess what? You know whose board this is? So, um, I, uh, I, I'm gonna try to keep this as simple as possible for the viewers. Uh, let me get my other laptop set up here somewhere so I can see your guys' chat. Oh, something is not working right with this. Uh, all right, well, I am going to push forward on this and iron out any difficulty that I have eventually. <laughs> all right, guys. So this is uh, me just going to explain how I go about working on the uh, cream boards that run these pretty high rail voltages uh, to be able to, not only for safety reasons I do this, uh, but just because parts is uh, extremely expensive. Oh my gosh, I can hear the I can hear the playback on my microphone. Uh, all right. So what I do is is Cliff with us? Uh, Cliff is not. I've not seen Cliff in yet. So Cliff, if you're in, let me know. And I will uh go ahead and continue with this here. Uh so the goal behind this is reduced rail voltage. I'm sure there, are, you know, people will replace all their parts, fire it up, and just uh, cross your finger and pray for the best. But that's not how I like to operate things. Uh, I like to make sure that my work is complete and functional before I power it up uh, with the full rail voltage. So as you can see up the side here, I have a, this is an amplifier. This is a crunch 2000 watt class d amplifier that uh, of course is parts um but what i'm doing is i'm using the power supply in this to power this otherwise your rail voltage i'm not sure for this amplifier itself this is a b2 what is this the m1u i think this amplifier is um mr zimmerman will correct me if i'm wrong on that the 
of course this is outside the heatsink right now so i think this is a b2 m1u amplifier which you're probably running about 160 to 170 volts on the rails probably uh, these are 200 volt rail capacitors so i'm safely assuming 160 volts uh, of course depending on your input voltage so that's really one thing you really want to pay attention to so this again does allow me to power up fully the output section board of pretty much all the SNI boards um, any board that I can either uh, split down the middle um, separate the power supply from the output section and eventually I will have it set up to where I can do this for any board that uses the uh, same design Korean design Yeah, so this will work for any design that is similar to this. This will work on the Sundown audio amps. This will work on the uh, DC boards. This works pretty much on any setup that uses this uh, negative referenced rail, regulated power supply, and then, of course, the positive plus minus 12 volts uh, supply here. So... Really, I just wanted to go over and show how this gets hooked up. Uh, so over here, I'm going to point out how I have the uh, backup power supply set up. So I'm using the rail-to-rail uh, -rail voltage. So it's a uh, minus 42 and positive 42 volts. Just right off to the edge here. Let me pull this over just a little bit. So I'm using the plus-minus rail voltage. I'm using the auxiliary tap off the transformer to create an AC auxiliary power. And then, of course, I have my common for the negative rail, which I call the negative rail uh, auxiliary power supply, which is the LA or uh, 7812. So this is a tw negative 12 volt reference to negative rail, 12 volt power supply there. And that's really all you need is just a couple wires from a voltage source to power the amplifier up. And the screws is just your speaker terminal screw. Uh, I think this is an M5 terminal screw. I have these by the hundreds, so I just grab a couple of them and they fit exactly on the terminal here. So I will take my leads and I'm just going to quickly hook them up and then I'll explain what each lead is doing for you. So red is my positive. I'm a retired electrician, so you'll have to excuse my color coding here. Um, so black's my negative rail. So you have your positive rail, negative rail, and you have your common. And it's the same on this side. Positive rail, negative rail, common. And we'll just give this amplifier a common. Just for the heck of it. Now, I don't know if this board itself works or not. I honestly don't know. I just got this board uh, split down the middle. It was soldered. Thanks, guys, for whoever soldered this last. Um, so I had to unsolder the uh, two halves apart. So I don't know this, uh, the status of the output board. Does it work? I'm not sure. It may work. It may not work. Um, but this will tell me if it does or not. So then I have my blue lead here. And my blue lead is my common, which you want your negative rail reference regulators to have a common. And then I have my AC. Now you got to make sure on your auxiliary supply that you have at least 15 volts, preferably a little bit more, but 15 volts AC on your auxiliary supply, uh, supply tap. Because if you're running um, a 7815 voltage regulator, you're going to remember you still have voltage drops you have to account for. Uh, so these are 12 volt regulators 
on that side and this is the 15 volt regulators here uh, which I am feeding the uh, 15 volt AC auxiliary tap to the power supply on this side the voltage regulators sorry I keep calling them power supplies they're power supplies in reality but they're voltage regulators or regulated voltage circuits and then you'll find on how I chose these pins it's pretty easy once you know what you're looking for I mean this this video is probably more geared towards the people that repair amplifiers um, and just want to find a different way of working on these really big amplifiers um, on safe voltages to help minimize burnt parts when you fire them up so uh, what you're looking for is you're looking for continuity from the 10 ohm resistors Oh, let me get this back into view over here. Oh, if I can't. Oh, let me just, we'll just squeeze this right in here. All right, so there's two 10 ohm resistors right off to the corner over here, probably behind a logo. I have a logo down the corner somewhere. Now, these two 10 ohm resistors do limit the current to your regulators here, these 7815s, negative and positive. And you'll find that the, uh, lead here we'll come right over here to a set of capacitors remember this is ac and what is uh capacitors pass is ac so that's going here and then from here the capacitors go to the 10 ohm resistors so i know this terminal feeds the resistors that supply the uh, voltage regulator circuit for the 15 volts so i know i'm on the right terminal there and these boards they're 90 percent they're all the same I mean, they're all the same design. So you'll get used to these pretty quick if you repair amplifiers normally. And then you're going to have another lead you got to find over here at the negative rail regulators. You're going to find a lead. These are in parallel. So these both have, share the same leads. You're going to find another one coming over here to the pin right on the edge. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the pins that go to the uh, voltage regulators. And, uh, let me just double check. my pins if I can get my pins right I'll be doing really good all right so that will reference your negative rail regulators to the negative rail to common because the negative rail of my power supply goes to the common of the output it's tied together so that references it back to common so we have our ac voltage here to go ahead and fire up the voltage regulators here we have our uh, negative referenced regulators hooked up we have our positive rail negative rail and our common now i don't think i'm going to be able to fit this all on camera but there is a blue LED on most all these boards. They're blue. Good old bright blue LEDs. So that LED will come on if you fire up this board the way I have it set up. Relays will not come on. So that's something, um, if you're using this kind of setup, you want to make sure that you understand that the relays will not come on. Let me just catch up on chat real quick here, guys. Will this be available later? Yes, this will be posted. Uh, this video will be posted in case uh, the guys um, are not able to join us today. But again, this video is geared towards the people that uh, repairs amplifiers pretty regularly. Um, do you use fuses in case the board is shorted? No. Fuses? Uh, you know what makes the best fuse in the world? A resistor and a diode.
<laughs> uh, I don't use fuses. Now my auxiliary supply has a fuse. I got a fuse right here in the side here. Um, so th the supply itself is fused. But again, I'm using the supply after um, the filter circuit here. So if there's any short here, it really just drags this down. I mean, there's, there's really no current really available out of these little amps. There is a little bit, um, but nothing like uh, the big surfboards. So yeah, there's no fuses. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Happy New Year. Hey, thanks. Hey, thanks for joining in. The Caribbeans. Well, thank you. I've noticed I'm getting a lot of people that um, are uh, outside the States, which I, I appreciate that. And um, I always find happiness in talking to people that are in other parts of the world. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, hey, don't worry. Uh, don't worry, Lucas. I guarantee you this this amplifier will be back up and running. Um, now, guarantee is a pretty strong word. You'd have to see what was done to this prior. So, uh, when I get deeper into this board, I may be contacting you. So, I think we're just going to go ahead and see. I like again. I don't know the status of this board. Um, if how I have this set up works. So my auxiliary power supply is set up. Um, with my standard 10 amp uh, supply down below. So anytime I turn on my 10 amp supply to do my normal daily testing of amplifiers, this thing is always powered up with it because the remote's not turned on. So I do have the remote over here next to me. Um, but we should be able to see everything that's going on. I don't have the scope up for you guys because I am, this is a live stream and it kind of drags down the computer just a little bit. So I, uh, if there's anything weird or abnormal, of course I'll bring it up for you guys. So the board does get a blue light. Blue light comes on. I, you guys can't see it, unfortunately, because it is off screen. I'd have to, I'd have to shift this whole thing over quite a bit probably to get to see this. Uh, oh, my work area is just too small for big amplifier board videos. Oh, one day, guys, that'll change. But, but we do get a blue light. That does not tell me that this is running. That's just telling me that so far things are looking pretty good. Um, thermal paste, of course. I despise thermal paste. Yeah, so there's no drive on this. Probably, probably a muting circuit issue uh, or auxiliary. Uh, 42, 8, 42, 4, 42, 42, 42, 42. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a no drive board. Now, if, if the drive was functional, um, blue light on, I would see switching on the uh, transistors. Which there's nothing. And of course, FedEx is beeping, honking at me. But that's how this is set up. Um, so there's no drive on this. I think it's in mute. So uh, that's gonna be a muting circuit issue. Um, of course, I would have to pull the board, check the board and all that. But this that's just preliminary. Um, again, this is just to really cover on how I set this up. But um, you'll see here that I do have rail voltage. I've got negative uh, 42 volts and I've got uh, positive 42 volts. And then uh, do I have the 15 volts the regulators? 
We're going to find out. So this is just to show us that we do have that we don't Or maybe hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was because my um it wasn't coming on because my terminal was in the wrong spot for the reference negative rail but uh so i moved it now because i wasn't getting the 15 volts from the regulators but uh, there is a definite <laughs> oh how funny is that there is drive oh i was lying to you guys there's drive here Yep, there's drive. So there's negative rail. Or not negative rail. So there's negative drive. We have negative and positive drive. Negative and positive drive. Positive, negative. Okay. So if this amplifier didn't work, it has, it's either going to be a preamp issue or it's not going to have any modulation. It has switching, but probably doesn't have modulation. So that just shows that we can use this setup to fire up this board the way it is. And if we had an input signal, and we know the relays don't come on, but you can check your signal at the inductors for your 50 hertz or whatever test tone you're using to work on the amplifier. So again, that's really all you need. This is really basic, simple setup for these is you need your positive rail, you need your negative rail. Um, you have your common. You have your negative rail voltage regulators that's referenced to negative rail. Common, referenced to common. And then you have your AC here. This creates your plus minus 15 volts if you're using 15 volt regulators over here. So this just controls your voltage regulators on this end that use the discrete diodes. Yeah, it's kind of hard to scoot all this over, but the uh, amplifier itself uses discrete diodes down here to rectify that AC voltage. And then of course the uh, 15 volt regulators, that's already rectified over at the power supply. And that, and that, my friends, is how I hook up boards for safety reasons and for inventory. I don't like to burn up my inventory. And if you guys have any questions, of course, I'm here. For you guys, but for free, feel uh, free to ask any questions that you may have about this. Otherwise, let's see. Can I possibly? Mm, I can't really. I want to see if this has modulation since we're this far on the board, and that we have Zimmerman here. Uh, but I don't have uh, the end for the RCAs. For the input signal. So I'll be right back. I would be, I would be, uh, 
astounded. I don't know what the right word would be. I'd be very surprised uh, if this... Uh, um, I'd be surprised if this didn't have a problem. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. So as of right now, there's nothing obviously wrong with this amplifier. Um, it's interesting. So let me put in my 50 hertz and output master. And then, of course, all your potentiometers are always in the null position, fully counterclockwise. This will tell me what is going on. With the output board. Oh, relays. And what do we got? Oh, sure enough, 50 hertz on the output. What? Hmm, that's interesting. On live stream, too. Uh, okay. Um, hey, uh, hey, Lucas, shoot me a text again on what the initial problem was with this amplifier. If you could, sir, uh, that'd be much appreciated. Well, so, well, not only did I show you how we can hook up an output board to a safe voltage and be able to test this, because you can sit there and touch that voltage pretty much all day and you wouldn't feel anything. Um, thermal paste. Yeah. Now, that is just an example of how to hook up power. There's different scenarios, different situations where you, you have to do certain things to make the output switch, just to let you know. So this isn't a full demonstration on how to diagnose a board. This is a just a video to show you how to hook up the board for safe operation. Because if there was a short anywhere, uh, first off, on a short, you would always pick it up. Even at 40 volts, you'll pick it up on your thermal imager. I've done so many of these, and I can tell by the sound that these make on what it's doing. This is real close in uh, how the sundown, like the SALT-12 functions. Um, I won't get full on switching with this particular setup, but I can see the low side, high side, and the 50 hertz that it is trying. Um, I don't have the high enough voltage or current, I think, to fire up this whole board, kind of like a SALT-12. But as long as I see that on the scope, then I know that this board is good to go. Um, but yeah, again, this isn't a video on how to diagnose these boards because there are certain things you got to do with certain amplifiers uh, to get the output section to run with your uh, auxiliary voltage supplies, power supplies. Muting circuits, that's the key word for uh, this kind of setup here is the muting circuit. So that's where I'm going to be uh, leaving this. It's about 30, about a half hour long video on how to set this up, what you're looking for. And I just wanted to show you just, just a few more small little items here about the auxiliary power supplies. There, I did release a video. It may have been a live stream. I'm not sure. Um, but I also have another set of wires here that comes off the AC side of the uh, transformers. So there's my black, red, and my green, my common. So I use these wires here to power up auxiliary power supplies, um, which I think I showed that one on a, wasn't a Stetson, uh, massive audio. I think I did that on a big massive board. 
a 24k is what it was uh, so it just it goes to show you can use as long as you understand uh, how this works AC versus DC understand how these boards work in general you can just tap off the areas of the board to use to power up other boards um, I'm working on making this smaller and more compact so I can mount it on the back wall over here uh, to just have my power leads available at any times that I have to drag this thing back and forth because this is permanently wired into my supplies um, but the concept I wanted to make sure the concept was proven before I started shrinking this down into a more manageable level because I don't use the output section of this at all to do this so um, again, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm always more than happy to answer questions, help anyone out uh, with any repairs. Um, and of course, as always, stay safe, guys. Rail voltages can get very dangerous. Um, and I always state this, safety will always come first. That's why I do this. And of course, we don't like to blow parts up and cause more failure. So... Thank you guys for watching.